Hello and welcome back to another video to help you pass the Science of Teaching Reading 293 test. Follow along with me as you watch this video. Start by meeting me at www.teacherstr.com, which includes both informational blog posts as well as test preparation products that are all designed to help you pass the STR 293 exam. For today, let's begin by clicking right here at the top. Here we are at our test products page, which includes the STR study guide online course and bundle, which includes the online course and study guide. Today we're discussing the online course, which is best for visual learners who enjoy learning through video, whereas our study guide is best for reading learners and our STR bundle, which includes the online course and study guide, is best for those type A people who just need to feel 100% confident when they begin to take their test. Let's go ahead and click on the online course. This is a paid program, but I can show you exactly what it looks like because I'm enrolled in it. The online course includes all of the domains and competencies that are needed to know in order to pass your STR test. Lesson number one gives you an overview and framework. Lesson two, which we're going to look at today, is all about the principles of the science of teaching reading. Next, we have reading instruction, phonemic awareness, an introduction to comprehension and concepts about print, reading levels and outcomes, fluency, variety in reading, phonics, structural analysis, assessments in reading, vocabulary for reading, and then we finalize our lessons with a lesson fully on comprehension before we get into the workshop where we teach you step-by-step step how to write a passing response for your constructed response question. But in this video, I'll share with you lesson number two for free so that you can both get the information that's covered in the lesson to help you pass your test, but also get a first-hand perspective for what the online course looks like in case you would like test preparation content explained directly to you. Without further ado, let's jump into lesson number two. Welcome everyone to the second lesson in the Science of Teaching Reading 293 Prep Test online course. By the end of this lesson, you will have a firm grasp for the principles of the science of teaching reading test. Without further ado, let's begin. The science of teaching reading exam scorers will want you to follow the strength-based approach of education, which helps facilitate classroom lessons based on the learner's strengths and interests. In this opposite approach to needs-based approach, also known as deficit-based approach, where the teacher provides lessons and guidance to bring up where the student lacks or struggles instead of raising their strength. Advantages to a strength-based approach are the following. This method takes into consideration the student's prior knowledge and experiences, uses the student's cultural background as an asset to their learning, helps students feel valued and gain a sense of worth. Important considerations about a strength-based approach include the teacher's need to form close bonds with their students. Personal information about the student, such as their cultural, socioeconomic, educational, linguistic, and other information in order to help inform the teacher's lesson planning, as well as providing ongoing assessments to be taken regularly in order to gather and analyze a student's current understanding to the skills being taught. Instructional strategies for strength-based approach utilize flexible groups, which provide time for students to work with a variety of classmates, allow students to choose a variety of ways to demonstrate their learning, as well as encourage students to use their prior personal experiences as a bank of resources for class lessons and projects. We'll get into all of these details and more in the slides to come. Let's keep going. Each student will face academic hardships, yet some find reading particularly difficult. As a teacher, it will be part of your job to know how to combat reading difficulties and to help those with disabilities to ensure that they continue to learn as well. Furthermore, the STR exam will expect that you understand how to identify and properly intervene to aid students with reading disabilities, particularly with dyslexia. The Texas Education Code defines dyslexia in the following way. Dyslexia means a disorder of constitutional origin manifested by a difficulty in learning to read, write, or spell despite conventional instruction, adequate intelligence, and social cultural opportunity. 
Characteristics of dyslexia include difficulties with identifying and recalling the names of alphabet letters, numbers, and familiar objects, mapping sounds to letters, auditory memory for rhymes, songs, and chants, blending, segmenting, and manipulating sounds in words, reading words in isolation or reading unknown words, reading fluency, spelling, vocabulary acquisition due to reduced independent reading, reading comprehension, and written, compre uh, written production as well. Dysgraphia is the term associated with a learning disability in writing. It includes both the physical act of writing and the quality of written expression. Students with dysgraphia may demonstrate difficulties one in one or more of the following areas. Handwriting and pencil grip, letter, word, or sentence formation, spelling, generation, planning, drafting, and organization, grammar and mechanics, rate and automaticity, as well as writing expression too. Dyscalculia is a term used to describe a learning disability in math. Students with dyscalculia will often struggle with counting backwards, understanding place value, and they will feel a high level of anxiety around math lessons. The STR test scorers expect you to have an understanding of the reading factors based on grade level, which is written by the Texas Education Agency Dyslexia Handbook. The information shares common factors associated with students who may, <clears throat> excuse me, may have dyslexia at different grade levels. Let's jump into exactly what you'll want to know for your test. For students in preschool, you may notice the following signs. Delay in learning to talk, difficulty with rhyming, difficulty pronouncing words such as paschetti for spaghetti, poor auditory memory for nursery rhymes and chants, difficulty adding new vocabulary words, inability to recall the right word, which is called word retrieval, trouble learning and naming letters and numbers, and then also remembering the letters in this student's name. Aversion to print, meaning they don't enjoy reading along a book um, and they don't enjoy trying to learn the mechanics of reading. For students in kindergarten and first grade, you may notice the following signs. Difficulty breaking words into smaller parts or syllables. For example, baseball can be pulled apart into base and ball. Difficulty identifying and manipulating sounds in syllables. For example, man sounded out as m, a, n. Mm, eh, mm. They will have difficulty segmenting those sounds in a word. They will also have difficulty remembering the names of letters and recalling the corresponding sounds. Um, they may find difficulty decoding single words, which is reading single words in isolation in particular. They will have difficulty spelling words the way they sound, which is phonetically, or remembering letter sequence, sequences in very common words seen often in print. For example, they might re write said like, like S-E-D for said, which is S-A-I-D. For students in second and third grade, you may notice the following signs. Difficulty recognizing common sight words, difficulty decoding single words, difficulty recalling the correct sounds for letters and letter patterns in reading, difficulty connecting speech sounds with appropriate letter or letter combinations, and omitting letters in words for spelling. Difficulty reading fluently, for example, reading in slow, inaccurate, or without expression, which is also called prosody. Difficulty decoding unfamiliar words in sentences using knowledge of phonics. Reliance on picture clues, story theme, or just guessing at words. And they may have difficulty with written expression as well. For students in fourth through sixth grade, you may notice the following signs. Difficulty reading aloud. They may have a fear of reading in front of their classmates. Avoidance to reading, particularly for pleasure. Difficulty reading fluently. For example, again, they are reading in that slow, inaccurate, or without expression type of style. Difficulty decoding unfamiliar words in sentences using phonics. Acquisition of less than their peers of vocabulary due to reduced independent reading, 
They may use less complicated words in their writing. For example, use the word big instead of enormous. I think I just put a G in that, enormous. Reliance on listening rather than reading for comprehension. Now, students will come from a variety of backgrounds. This STR exam will expect that you find equitable ways to provide standards-based learning for all of your students. Let's begin with what to do if you receive a question on your STR exam about teaching students with special needs. In order to differentiate instruction for students with an individualized education program, give students more time. Split up assessments into smaller units and provide practice assessments. Remember, in order to properly accommodate students with dyslexia and other reading needs, your teaching instruction must be direct and explicit. The STR test scorers, test administrators, will want to see these words, direct and explicit instruction, so make sure to use them. TeachYourSTR.com, the best place to help you pass the science of teaching reading tests.